Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into the empowering guide of maintaining personal boundaries, titled Boundaries. Co authored by clinical psychologist Dr. Henry Cloud and business consultant Dr. John Townsend, this New York Times best selling book explores the importance of setting healthy emotional and spiritual limits, interweaving Christian faith and contemporary psychology. Boundaries serves as an essential manual for those who struggle with understanding when to say no and for those who do not respect the word no. It is also a vital resource for people who constantly give but struggle to receive help. If you identify as someone who often feels like a doormat, an emotionally unavailable person, or a martyr who is continually doing for others but never for oneself, this book is your call to empowerment and balance. Through this episode, uncover the transformative insights within boundaries and start your journey towards stronger interpersonal relationships. Let's dive in. Boundaries. When to say yes, how to say no to take control of your life. Introduction. Explore the power of setting boundaries for healthier relationships and a better you. Have you ever wondered what your day would look like if you had no personal boundaries? Let's paint a picture. You wake up far earlier than your usual alarm time to prepare breakfast for your children. Even though you desperately need to fine tune your crucial work presentation, you hesitate to ask your partner for help in the kitchen. At your workplace, the necessary setup for your presentation is untouched. It isn't your responsibility, yet you find yourself scrambling to arrange everything. Before you can kickstart your presentation, your boss casually drops the responsibility of organizing the upcoming Christmas party on your plate, claiming he's swamped with other work. Predictably, you nod in agreement. All these trials and tribulations, and it's not even noon yet. Does this ring a bell? If it does, then you understand the exhausting aftermath of a boundaryless day or even life. Setting boundaries is an essential part of self care, and surprisingly, a gesture of consideration towards others. In the following narrative, we'll unlock the process of establishing boundaries and learn practical methods to implement them through potential case studies. So, get ready to discover why allowing others to overstep your boundaries not only harms you, but them as well, how to navigate and rectify common boundary breaches, and why the act of setting boundaries may be the most altruistic decision you'll ever make. Part 1. Embrace kindness through setting boundaries. When you pause to observe, you'll notice that our tangible surroundings are speckled with several clear-cut boundaries. Walls, fences, or signs warning, no trespassing, all serve their individual purposes in maintaining order. Reflect upon the barbed wire encircling a nuclear power plant. Its prime function is to protect you, averting the danger of unknowingly wandering into a perilous area. In much the same way, Boundaries act as crucial safeguards for your emotional and spiritual welfare. Unlike physical boundaries, emotional and spiritual boundaries are not always visibly marked or universally understood, making them challenging to establish and respect. Moreover, it often leads to a sense of guilt when you insist upon them. However, that shouldn't be the case. Here's a fundamental truth to remember. Setting boundaries is an act of kindness. When you delineate a boundary, You are taking command of your needs, desires, and emotions. Often prioritizing our own needs leads to a nagging sense of guilt, as though we are neglecting the needs of those around us. Clarity is essential here. Formulating healthy boundaries doesn't imply that you are indifferent to other people's predicaments or spiritual worries. Instead, it signifies that you are not solely accountable for them. Drawing from the wisdom of the biblical book of Galatians, Understand that you are responsible to others, but answerable for yourself. To help clarify this distinction, let's visualize a fictitious family scenario. Meet the O'Reillys. The O'Reillys are a tight-knit family, albeit their son, James, has strayed off track. He's expelled from school and battling a drug addiction. 
the O'Reillys could adopt responsibility for their son's issues, enrolling him in a different school and covering the fines accumulated from his drug possession charges. However, this doesn't address James's core problem. In fact, it hardly constitutes a problem for James, as his parents bear the brunt of it. The alternative lies in the O'Reillys embracing their responsibility towards James without assuming the weight of his problems. They can lend him an ear, offer support, and arrange for his rehabilitation, all without directly solving his problems for him. By setting such boundaries, the O'Reillys are looking after their well-being as well as James. Emphasizing boundaries is not merely an act of kindness towards yourself, but a profound display of love and concern for those around you. Part 2. Discover the many faces of boundary issues. You might be sitting there convincing yourself, I'm forthright, I don't hesitate to say no, I certainly don't struggle with boundary issues. But hold on, boundary problems aren't a one-size-fits-all phenomenon. The key takeaway is, boundary issues can take numerous forms. Upon hearing the phrase boundary problems, most people picture a compliant individual, someone who just can't muster up the courage to say no. A compliant person is akin to a doormat, continually being exploited by others. However, your boundary issues may not necessarily reflect in the form of compliance, but that doesn't indicate their absence. You could be an avoidant. Think of boundaries as fences. They keep out elements that could inflict emotional and spiritual harm. But, like fences, boundaries also have gates. Avoidants are so engrossed in constructing their protective fences that they inadvertently shut out the good along with the bad. When your boundaries become excessively rigid, you end up hindering emotional exchanges and denying help even when needed. On the other hand, you might resonate more with a controller. Suppose you observe that people never seem to cross your boundaries. Could it be that you're encroaching upon theirs? If you find yourself relating to the boss who sends out emails over the weekend or the friend who dismisses a no, you might be embodying a controller. You might see this as a win-win scenario. People respect your boundaries, and you manipulate them to meet your needs. However, this attitude is not just cynical, but also damaging to relationships. Controllers' relationships are underpinned by the fear and guilt they impose on others, not genuine respect or love. Consequently, at their core, controllers rarely feel authentically loved. Lastly, you might identify as a non-responsive, Non-responsives not only dodge the responsibility for others, but also sidestep their obligations towards them. If you tend to respond to others' problems with apathetic remarks like tough luck, then you might be a non-responsive, which could make it extremely difficult for others to form close bonds with you. It's evident that boundary issues can materialize in an array of ways. So even if you're not a compliant person, don't rush to the conclusion that you're devoid of boundary issues. The problem could still be lurking in another guise. Part 3. Debunking Common Misconceptions About Healthy Boundaries What's stopping you from erecting healthy boundaries that nurture both you and those around you? Maybe you're under the impression that setting boundaries is an act of selfishness or that it conflicts with your religious beliefs. As Christians, some might reference the Bible, recalling how John's quotes emphasize that the measure of Christ's followers lies in their capacity to love others. Nevertheless, the ability to love others genuinely stems from our capacity to love ourselves first. Establishing boundaries is a sincere expression of self-love. To view healthy boundaries as selfish is simply a myth. The central idea to remember is, don't fall for widespread myths about healthy boundaries. As you embark on the journey of setting boundaries, you're likely to encounter various myths and misconceptions that might deter your progress. You might falter at the prospect of setting boundaries, thinking that they will inadvertently hurt others. However, in reality, if setting healthy boundaries within a relationship incites hurt, the flaw lies not in the boundaries but in the relationship itself. Consider a scenario where you choose to protect your time by declining to babysit for your friend on a weekly basis. Suppose your friend reacts negatively and cuts off communication. Are you at fault here? No. 
the unreasonable reaction of your friend points towards a relationship built on total compliance. If such a relationship can't withstand boundaries, it's perhaps not worth maintaining. A popular misunderstanding assumes that people who establish boundaries do so out of anger. Granted, setting boundaries might initially stir up anger, but this anger is a byproduct of the hurt originating from violated boundaries. Violated boundaries are a result of your boundaries being disrespected or not being allowed to be set at all. Many of us suppress the feelings of hurt and anger that surface when our boundaries are infringed upon. As you start defining your limits, it's only natural for this pent-up anger to emerge. Creating boundaries grants you the necessary space to process and resolve this anger. There's also a hesitance to set boundaries, stemming from the notion that they are permanent. However, the permanency of a boundary is determined by your choice. Asking your mother to refrain from unsolicited parenting advice doesn't imply a permanent separation. As your relationship evolves, you might even reach a stage where it's comfortable to discuss previously sensitive topics like screen time and toilet training. Part 4. Embark on the fulfilling journey towards a life with boundaries. Initially, while you're grappling with the concept of boundaries, you might find yourself meekly accepting instances of boundary infringements. You might shrug it off, thinking, Carol always seeks my help for babysitting at the 11th hour, but that's just her style. Or, Lynn often ridicules me in front of his friends. He's merely jesting, though. With time, these instances may trigger feelings of resentment. Although uncomfortable, these feelings can be constructive. They indicate your growing intolerance towards boundary breaches. So, heed your resentment. It's your heart signaling that your boundaries have been trespassed one too many times. Acknowledging these feelings is the first stride towards cultivating a life with healthy boundaries. The primary insight to note is, the journey towards a life with boundaries is an extended yet gratifying process. Ever attempted to establish boundaries with a controller or a manipulator? They seldom accept a no, especially when they intend to exploit you. Their dependence on you can be strangely addicting, making you feel indispensable and valued. On the contrary, people who respect your boundaries, like friends who don't react negatively when you turn down their invitation to Sunday lunch, won't give you that rush. However, as you embark on your journey towards healthier boundaries, you'll find yourself gravitating towards them nonetheless. This inclination is a clear sign of you recovering from your boundary issues. Subsequently, you'll discover the importance of self-love and self-value, concepts that the authors equate to loving God. When we're mistreated, our boundaries are consistently breached, leading us to perceive ourselves through the violator's lens. This results in us neglecting the talents, gifts, feelings, thoughts, and body that, as Christians believe, God bestowed upon us. If we fail to appreciate these aspects in ourselves, we can't expect to value them in others, ultimately disappointing God. Recognizing and celebrating your worth is a critical milestone in your journey. Following this, the next step involves comfortably setting low-stakes boundaries and easing personal boundaries that no longer serve you. You'll find yourself asserting that your spouse shouldn't always leave you with dirty dishes or accepting a friend's offer to bring dessert to your dinner party. By adjusting these minor boundaries, you'll learn to establish and fine-tune bigger ones. Eventually, you'll develop a fondness for your healthy boundaries and appreciate the space and respect they've introduced into your life. Part 5. Your family is your first teacher in boundary setting. Ever noticed how you become a confident, accomplished individual who mysteriously transforms into an insecure, depressed version of yourself after family gatherings? Or how you adore your partner, but somehow always manage to belittle them to please your parents? Are you an adult who leans heavily on your parents for assistance, from paying credit card bills to doing laundry? If you find yourself nodding to any of these questions, your family likely suffers from boundary issues. These problems are not just restricted to your family setting but they shape the boundaries you establish in your personal life as well. The crucial insight is, our first lessons in boundary setting come from our families. 
Whether you find yourself continuously counseling your parents or running to them for every hurdle life throws at you, you're probably replaying the boundary problems learned in your childhood. If your upbringing involved no boundaries or was dominated by overly rigid ones, it influences your outlook towards setting limits. If you hail from a family where issues were swept under the rug and unacceptable behaviors weren't confronted, you're bound to carry that approach into your adult life. So, how can you break away from these detrimental patterns ingrained in you since childhood? Start by identifying the core issue. Where have you lost the reins over your needs? Where are you shouldering responsibilities that aren't yours or shirking your responsibilities onto others? Following this, strive to pinpoint the unfulfilled needs underlying your boundary issues. Do you prioritize your mother's needs over yours because you seek her approval? Do you rely on your father to solve all your problems because you crave his attention? Understanding the why behind your actions can empower you to modify how you behave. Lastly, the next time your boundaries are breached, endeavor to respond rather than impulsively react. When you react, you operate based on instinct and don't put much thought into it. If your boundaries aren't well defined, they're likely to get overlooked amid an emotional reaction. However, responding to a situation enables you to remain calm, analyze the situation, and then act thoughtfully. But what if you're dealing with a family member who consistently and callously oversteps your boundaries? While it's not essential to keep them in your life, remember to extend forgiveness towards them. Holding on to grudges indicates that you're still expecting something from them. Forgiving these transgressions is a step towards your liberation. Part 6. Healthy boundaries are the secret ingredient for a thriving romantic relationship. Yes, you've heard it right. Constructing and upholding boundaries isn't merely a self-care tactic. It's a conduit to caring more genuinely for others. In fact, the longevity and well-being of relationships rely heavily on the enforcement and respect of boundaries. So, what about marriage? Surely, being in love and sharing everything with your spouse eliminates the need for boundaries, right? Well, not really. Boundaries might not be flashy diamond rings or bouquets of long-stemmed roses, but they are a thoughtful and loving present to your partner and yourself. The primary insight is, healthy boundaries are the secret ingredient for a thriving romantic relationship. Absence of boundaries or disregard for them triggers issues. Let's look at some couples grappling with the challenges of setting and safeguarding boundaries. Consider Rosario, who believes her husband Jim has a drinking problem. Every attempt of hers to get him to quit is met with indifference. She laments, When you drink, I feel like you don't care about me and the children. What's wrong here? Rosario is breaching a boundary by assuming Jim's feelings. She's not acknowledging her own feelings. Instead of her current approach, Rosario should express herself by saying, When you drink, I feel scared and alone. This is a healthier method for Rosario to address Jim's issue. Owning your desires is also crucial. Take the example of Andrea, who often brings work home owing to her demanding job. This irritates her partner Caroline, who longs to spend quality time with her. Consequently, Caroline becomes aloof and irritated in the evenings. But Andrea isn't the antagonist here. The couple merely has conflicting desires. Caroline yearns for Andrea's company and Andrea needs to catch up on her work. If Caroline could articulate her desire and request Andrea to dedicate a few work-free evenings every week, it would foster more harmony between them. Lastly, owning your limitations is essential. Raphael takes immense pride in his home and frequently engages in DIY projects, enlisting Julie's help on weekends. This irritates Julie, as she's unable to pursue her hobby, oil painting, owing to her involvement in Raphael's projects. In reality, Julie could dedicate time to oil painting, but she doesn't, because she fails to acknowledge her limitations. There are bounds to what we can offer our partners without sacrificing ourselves. Neglecting to recognize and respect these limitations seeds resentment. While each of these couples faces unique issues, the solution is invariably the same. They need to establish, uphold, and respect boundaries. Part 7. 
friendships flourish with healthy boundaries. Does this resonate with you? You are adept at expressing your needs to your spouse. You have zero tolerance for your family overstepping your boundaries. However, when it comes to your friendships, establishing healthy boundaries seems to elude you. That's indeed a problem. Apart from your spouse and family, some of your most profound relationships are with your friends. It becomes effortless to slip into troubling patterns in these relationships if you don't enforce healthy boundaries. The essential takeaway is, friendships flourish with healthy boundaries. Now what does a friendship devoid of healthy boundaries look like? Typically, compliant friends endeavor to appease each other, each surrendering to the other's whims. It's natural to be accommodating in a friendship. After all, you enjoy each other's company. You strive to please each other. However, this strategy can prove counterproductive. Consider Tom and Andy, two compliant friends who bend over backward to keep each other content. On one weekend, the duo has to choose between going for a hike or attending a concert. Tom, in his bid to please Andy, proposes the hike. Andy, equally eager to please Tom, concurs. The catch? They both actually wanted to go to the concert. Evidently, Tom and Andy need to be sincere with themselves and each other about how they want to spend their shared time. On the other end of the spectrum, a compliant friend partnered with a controller might find herself continuously trampled upon by her friend, leading to dissatisfaction for both. Suppose a compliant friend Becky is close to a controller Soon Yi. Soon Yi controls Becky directly, asking her to cancel weekend plans to accommodate Soon Yi. She also manipulates Becky, uttering statements like, I wouldn't ask if I didn't need you, but I can't go to the festival without you. Becky starts to feel exploited and overwhelmed by Soon Yi's demands. At first sight, it seems like Soon Yi is the offender. However, Becky has never indicated her resentment of Soon Yi's behavior. To restore the equilibrium in their friendship, Becky needs to provide Soon Yi with considerate feedback. If Becky values her friendship with Soon Yi, she will treat this as an opportunity to make Soon Yi aware of the adverse effects of her behavior. If Soon Yi cherishes her friendship with Becky, she will appreciate the chance to learn and evolve. Both compliance and controllers aren't inherently bad friends. However, in the absence of boundaries, both these types can behave in ways that can strain a friendship. Part 8. Professional success requires personal boundaries. Picture Ahmed. He's a go-getter at work, renowned as a hard-working team member who constantly goes the extra mile, often working late nights and weekends. While his professional persona thrives, his family life suffers. In Ahmed's view, his trouble stems from his inability to say no. However, his wife Julia disagrees. Ahmed, according to her, is adept at saying no. He does so to his family consistently. He's merely more comfortable setting boundaries in his personal life than in his professional life. But Ahmed must realize that boundaries are as essential in the office as they are at home. The pivotal message is, professional success requires personal boundaries. The stress to demonstrate our dependability and professionalism often leads us to ignore our personal boundaries at work. Yet, the ticking of the work clock doesn't evaporate your need for boundaries. There are a few common traps related to work and boundaries. One of them involves being over-responsible, shouldering responsibilities that aren't yours, driven by the fear that a colleague's unfinished tasks or mediocre performance will taint your reputation. If this resonates with you, it's time to step back own only your problems and tasks, and let others handle theirs. Another prevalent mistake is overworking, attempting to handle more work than a single individual can manage. When your work pile is overbearing, it might seem like it's your issue to sort out. However, if you're routinely overworked, the fault doesn't lie with you. It lies with your boss who can't effectively delegate and manage work. Don't take the blame for a problem that isn't yours. Bosses aren't the sole issue. Dealing with colleagues who are consistently critical can be highly stressful. Remember the underlying principle of boundaries. Ownership? 
you aren't responsible for anyone's negative attitude towards you. If necessary, you can confront a coworker about her behavior, providing her a chance to learn and improve. However, your coworker's problems with you are hers, and hers alone. Finally, ensure you establish a clear demarcation between work and home. Leave work related stress at work and domestic worries at home. Acknowledge that work is never ending. There's always more to do, but your time is limited. Remember, if you can't say no to work, you're invariably saying no to other aspects that enrich your life. Final summary When life seems to whirl into chaos and relationships become overbearing, it's usually a sign of absent or weak boundaries. Boundaries empower us to identify, claim, and handle our own issues, desires, and emotions. They facilitate our support of others in their struggles without taking on their problems, and they allow us to seek and accept assistance. Boundaries aren't just crucial. They can be a wellspring of love and happiness in our lives. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.